it's Monica thank you so much for joining me I'll tell you I royally messed up we um, last in my last video I talked about how we had wanted to go up to the Mount Washington Hotel up in Bretton Woods New Hampshire which is about a two-hour ride from our home roughly and or maybe a little bit longer and we wanted to go up there and spend the day and all that but we didn't because of the weather so we went yesterday saturday you hopefully you're seeing this on a sunday um the 5th of december i hope i don't know for sure but i hope anyways we went up there and i took my new gopro i did all of these little video clips they were absolutely awesome i kept checking to see and I was like loving the footage so we had a full day we had a blast Jay flew his drone I, I did all sorts of different video clips it was just really wonderful and I was planned to do a vlog and I planned to let it go live this morning I was gonna edit it last night well got home put the footage in my laptop looked at it the footage was beautiful the GoPro was like amazing but somehow I had inadvertently in my settings put on the setting for um, four times slow-mo at 120 or 124 frames per second, which is like amazingly slow. And the issue is like when you look at, when you preview your footage after you film it, you're only gonna, like I only watch like the first, you know, 10, 15 seconds and go, okay, that was a good clip. Well, the snow, the slow-mo doesn't kick in till like what, 30 or 60 seconds later, right? So you can start out normal and all of a sudden you go, oh, and that's what happened to every single clip I did with my GoPro. And I did 24 video clips. I was going to edit them, put them together. And I did a few with my phone, thankfully, like three or four. No, two, I think. Well, anyways, I did a few with my phone and those came out okay. But I was beating myself up last night. I couldn't believe it. I tried to adjust it. I tried to figure out how to fix it so that I, I knew I could slow the clip down, which I did. But I couldn't get the talking head ones, you know, where Jay and I are in it talking. I couldn't get that to quite sync, to slow down enough, to have our voices sound normal. It was like unreal. So I ended up just muting the sound, cutting and editing, and doing a voiceover. So I'm going to insert that here. That would have been my vlog style video, but I totally messed up. But I'm going to insert that in a little bit. Um, I had got, and I had been, I have been contacted by this one particular company. You know, I, I've been sort of like in a sour mode on products. I don't know why. I, I turn a lot of products down. I look at Octoly and I'm going, uh. So it's very few things that I have an interest in trying to review or grab or share with you in that sense. I just, I'm just still feeling the blahs, I guess. And um, so this particular company, Nail Addict, as some of you, I'm sure it's, they're from, based in California. They've reached out to me a number of times and I've just rejected them or ignored them. And this last time they reached out to me and I looked at my nails. My nails are horrible. Now I've been doing a lot of polish, but I, I went through a phase where we were doing a bunch of things around the house and I, all my nails are broken off. My, my hands are horrible right now. So they reached out to me again and I said, all right, let me try it. So what did they have? Is they have these gel polishes like you would go in a salon. I'm sure you all know. And you can do it at home. So it's your, your do it at home gel polish. But when I was reading about their polishes, they're, they're vegan, they're cruelty free, but more importantly, there are like nine, or maybe even more now, but there are like nine really harmful toxic chemicals that are found in most, not all, but most nail polishes. And they can, they can really do a lot of damage to, especially to your nails, but these toxic chemicals um, are not in these polishes. They have removed those toxic chemicals and I really like that idea. And they're all they're all cruelty free. So I said, let me take another look at them. And I did. They sent me five polishes, a base coat and a top coat, which I'm looking forward to trying. And then they sent me this little curing lamp. Now, to me, I think I think this might retail for like twenty nine dollars. Right now, everything is on sale on their website. I'm not an affiliate member. I'm not making anything. I don't have a coupon code for you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just kind of sharing it because I thought it was kind of cool. So 50%, 40% off sales I've been seeing. The last one I saw on Facebook was 50% off. And if you don't have a curing lamp at home, you can buy one of these small ones. But I'll tell you, I mean, they, they you plug them in, you know, to your laptop or your outlet or whatever. 
um, and turn them on and then you put your hand on there and it cures it. But this is so small that you can't get, I can't get all of my fingers. I can do my four fingers, but not my thumb, right? Not at the same time or my fingers would stick out. So it's like fingers and thumbs separately, which is to me a pain in the butt. So I think I'm going to invest in the bigger one so I can put my whole hand in there. But first I'm going to see how I like these polishes, how they hold out before I invest in the bigger one. So I selected a couple of really pretty colors. I have like five colors and they're really, really pretty and a bundle package. And then, so I have solid color, then I have a little like, holiday glitter on top. So I'm gonna try that. The base coat and the top coat all came with the bundle. So anyways, that was said to be complimentary, but I'm gonna give it a shot. My nails are just really horrible. Um, I've been doing a lot of work. I've been doing a lot of stuff and my hands show it. So I'm going to try to do this for the Christmas holidays and uh, and just kind of, you know, make it so it looks a little bit better. My nails look a little bit better. But this mini UV LED lamp, I guess in between each polish, like you put your base coat on after you, you clean your nails and do all that stuff, then you have to let it cure. And then every coat. So a bigger lamp for me would definitely work better. But... Anyways, I'm excited to try that. So the other thing that we did this past week, I talked about last weekend, was um, we went to this event. This was a, a holiday installation slash event for the New Hampshire Association of Realtors where they were installing their new officers, right? It's, it's a trade association. We have officers and elections and all that. So they were installing their new officers. And so we went, it was the 60th annual installation. I'm going to enclose some pictures here for you to see. We went, we had a great time. Now I'm 2010 past president. Jay was 2004 past president. At our table that I sat um, was my immediate uh, president-elect who would, would have been 2011 past president. And so we had all these past presidents at our table and there were many other past presidents in the room as well. We call ourselves the has-been club. But it was so, I just can't tell you how nice it was to, and we, and masks were encouraged. They provided masks for those people that felt they needed it. Um, the facility was, I mean, it was, it's the barn at Bull Meadow. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been to the barn at Bull Meadow, but it was awesome. It was really, really pretty and clean as a whistle. It was really a nice event. So it was awesome to see all these old faces, people that I hadn't really seen and networked with in person since pre-COVID, right? I think the last networking event I went to for the New Hampshire Association of Realtors might have been in February of 2019. So that's how far back we're going. And uh, so it was really nice to see all these old faces. And I mean that nicely. Yeah, I mean, all our faces are older, but I didn't mean it wrinkly. I meant just people that I had known for many, many years. So that was sort of a highlight of the week of being able to do that. And then, of course, looking forward to going to Mount Washington. I'll tell you, I was heartbroken when I looked at my footage. So stay tuned. Take a look at it. If you're new to my channel, please, please consider subscribing. Give me a comment, leave a comment, like the video. I really enjoy engaging with you all. So stay tuned for my, what should have been, my vlog. Hey guys, it's Monica and JJ. And we are heading up north. We're gonna go up to the White Mountains and um, who knows what we're gonna see along the way, but that's our plan. And hopefully we're gonna get to the Mount Washington Hotel and Resort and uh, Jay's got his drone with him. I'm shooting this on my GoPro that I got for a, a surprise gift from him. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So if you're curious about that, stay tuned. Hey honey, we're on the highway. Yeah. Yeah, so you excited? I don't know if I'm excited, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, At least the closer we get there, the better. Yeah, it, it is. And I'm going to try to shoot a little bit of the uh, the road because I'm using the GoPro, so I want to see how the footage comes out, and sort of like a vlog style. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this looks in editing when we're all done. And um, hopefully... Driving through Franconia Notch is probably the prettiest parkway 
that we have up in our mountains. Really love this whole area. I know the video is not doing it justice at all, but oh my gosh, in real life, it was just so pretty. I've had to speed up the clip because it was like over eight minutes long. So we arrived and ooh, it's cold. So we're gonna hopefully go. I might have got two or three minutes of video, but it was well worth it. Oh, yeah. You know, I think so. Look at how beautiful. This is some of Jay's drone footage showing the long drive into the Mount Washington. The Mount Washington is just a grand hotel that was built in 1900 by a gentleman named Joseph Stickney, who was a native of actually Concord, New Hampshire. It was completed in 1902, and at the opening ceremony, he stood there, and uh, because he was quite rich, made his fortune before he was 30, and, um, and he stood there and said, look at me, gentlemen, for I am the poor fool who bought all of this. And he turned the hotel into a grand piece over the course of history. There's been a number of different ownership. Currently, it's under the ownership of the Omni Hotels, and you can see how beautiful it is. Combination of photos here, drone footage, as Jay and I started to walk up to the hotel to enter. And, oh my gosh, we got to the grand entranceway, and these horse, this horse-drawn carriage came by. So pretty. As we walked in the grand hallway, the foyer, there's fireplaces. It was really warm and inviting. Christmas trees all decked out for the holidays. Such a pretty, pretty place. And you know, they didn't open up for winter um, year round, I think until 1999. These are just be seasonal. So now they're opened all year round and many people go up there to enjoy skiing because right across the street is the Brenton Woods ski area or snowshoeing. And there's all sorts of different events here. When we stopped by, there were three weddings in the planning for this weekend. And it was just so pretty. We went out on the back deck here overlooking the mountain range. In the summertime, many a times actually, Jay and I have sat out here on these chairs different seasons because we've had many conferences and conventions up here for the Realtor Association. We sat out here and enjoyed the views and just so pretty. A little bit of the history. After Mr. Stickney passed away and he only got to live in there two years because he was dead within a year after the completion and he was only 64 years old, his wife Carolyn spent all her summers at the hotel for the next decade, and she added the sun dining room that we just walked through. She added a whole bunch of different things. The fourth floor with the towers and the chapel, she dedicated that whole area to her late husband, and she had someone manage it. And of course, you know, things happen, prohibition and, you know, the wars and all of that, and a period of time the hotel actually closed. But then again, it was reopened, purchased at one point um, as a national by the government and then sold to investors and now the Omni, of course. The hotel is known to be haunted. Several hauntings have happened in the hotel. Of course, they're not talking too much about that nowadays. If you read up on the hotel, they don't quite mention that. But there has been a number of little areas or little you know, is issues and reports of haunting. This footage you're looking at right now is at the end of our visit. Jay took up the drone from the parking lot so you could see the back side of the hotel. Isn't that amazing? Just absolutely amazing. And then he guided it back. And this is kind of really cool. You can see it going right back to our car and then landing right down on the ground. I always like hold my breath when that happens. And before we left, we went inside and had lunch in the sun dining room. And we had a seat that showed the outside so you could see the mountain range. Visited the very popular cave, which is kind of like a bar and entertainment area that we used to spend a lot of time in and just enjoyed the decorations before we headed home. So as you can see, 
by the abrupt ending. Uh, even though there was a, another video clip I really liked of Jay and I standing and I was filming the two of us talking in the frame, I could not salvage it whatsoever. So that didn't get included. But we had a, we just had a great time in Mount Washington. There's a huge, huge history behind that, especially with the ghost sightings. I have seen the ghost myself. I've stayed in the tower room that was haunted. I stayed in one of the other rooms that were haunted. So I know people that have seen it, whether you believe it or not. Um, but it's just, it is just an exquisite old time hotel. Many, many rich and famous folks have stayed there. Presidents have stayed there. So it's just a beautiful landmark in New Hampshire at the White Mountains. And I just was thrilled we made it this year and able to share some of these photos and whatever I could salvage in the video clips with you guys. So anyways, that's it for me. I'm going to say thank you again so much for watching, for joining me, for all your support. Appreciate every single one of you and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.